Hi, my name is Mark Boyle and uh, I'd like to say thank you very much for having me at the Change Showcast. Um, so, Mark, can you tell us then um, about your personal story and, and how you started off on, on you know, the path you, you, you set out on? Yeah, so back in around 2006, um, I'd been looking at the world and all the problems, you know, from sweatshop labour to factory farming and deforestation and wondering what, you know, what could I as one person do to kind of impact the interest of these things. And as you can imagine, it was quite overwhelming, you know, these are big issues. And, but uh, the more I looked into it, the more I realised that actually all these things are the common root cause. And that was our, our kind of perceived sense of separation from nature and from each other. Um, and, and the most potent tool that we have in terms of um, having that illusionary sense of um, separation was money. You know, it allows us to have any relationship with the people we, we meet or need um, from. So we have no relationship with, some, with a farmer in Chile or South Africa or whatever. And in those big long supply chains, lots of pretty bad things happen. And so um, I wanted to take money out of the equation so I would localise my life completely. So I would have a full relationship with the land, um, which I met my needs and the people in my local community. How hard was it when you were first starting out on this like enormous challenge? What, what, what was the kind of first steps that you took? Yeah, I came from a very conventional background. I wasn't born a hippie, so um, I hadn't the skills that um, you would like to have starting out something like this. So the first thing was really understanding like what are my basic needs. You know, I need food, I need water, I need shelter, and you start from there, and you start to learn how you do things without money from there. You know, you you you, you realise you can actually forage some food from the wild. You can grow your own food. You can even that's what you want, and um, and you start from that point, and then the more you go into it, the more you develop. And um, you start making a few pastes from you know, from forage ingredients. Or you start using the toilet paper. You start you, you make a whole list of things in which you can uh, in which you can replace your um, your old kind of transactions. And um, so it, it was hugely challenging the first two or three months. I had you know I I kind of took a leap of faith. Um, but it was incredible how quickly you learn when you have to. And oh, the way. what was the what was the biggest challenge? Can you can you describe one particular event which you found really tough to 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 overcome? I think there were lots of little small particular challenges um, in terms of practicalities. You know, especially in the first few months, it was a daily thing. You know, everything was a challenge. I think the biggest challenges were actually mental. Um, and psychological and emotional, um, especially around the idea of security. You know, um, I was um, I was used to having money in the bank. You know, and and if you if I had a grand in the bank, then I was pretty secure for the next month or two. Um, you take that out of the equation, and you're living off the land. You're living off your own skills and your own abilities. That's quite a hard thing to take um, at the beginning. So I think the kind of thing in life, the biggest challenges are actually psychological and emotional. Um, I always say it, it takes 10 seconds to show some, someone how to plant a seed, but it can take you about two years um, to convince them of the need to see. And what um, are, how do you feel about, you know, living like this now? Is it something that you, because you originally undertook it, you know, as a challenge for a, perhaps a, a period of time, but you commit, is something you've committed to doing now, and how does, can you imagine going back to ever going back to the way things work? Yeah, no, I could, I, I love my life now. You know, um, I've, I've never been happier um, or healthier, um, and and it's all going back to living my old life though. Um, it doesn't appeal anymore. You know, it may appeal to other people, and that's that's fine. But it's I've seen a new way of being in it. You know, I've experienced something different, and that's what I love now. And I just I want to spend my life kind of helping other people, um, you know, to experience some of the things I've experienced. If that's what they want. Um, if you could, could you do you think you could take me through like a a, a day in your life, like what you what you do um, every day to kind of be self sufficient? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I guess I ask that question a lot, and it's actually <laughs> it's, it's not quite work like that. It's you know I, I kind of. 
I do benefit from the economies of scale, you know, to some degree as well. You know, to some days I'll I'll grow food, and other day I'll chop wood. You know, and there's no like I think people want me to have like you know, 15 minutes of this and this and this, but actually it's very seasonal. You know, um, like I might spend two weeks at some point just chopping wood, you know, and gathering up wood. Um, for us, you know, it's that's just what you do. And then in the spring, you're back into planting seeds and stuff again. Um, so every day is completely different. It's not a really diverse mix of things every every single day. Um, but there's there's great diversity within seasons. Yeah. Um, I'm never really doing the same thing for very long, you know. And so you can kind of enrich your life with all those different experiences. And um, if you I had five years to start another endeavour to, to focus on changing one thing about the world and that you could change. What would you do? How would you go about it? That's a pretty big question. Um, I think I think we need huge radical political change. You know? um, there's very entrenched political institutions and, um, and parties that are that have absolutely no intention about creating an ecologically sound um, you know, socially just world, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen. And we need to wake up to that, you know, we need to be honest about this. It's, um, we, so how you do that is a bigger question, and I guess this is what you're exploring at the conference this weekend. Um, but yeah, I think radical change on a political level uh, has got to has gotta happen quite soon. We're, all, we're on the brink of a climate catastrophe, you know. We you knew scientific have been suggested for 20, 30 years, you know, absolute max, you know, possibly 10, which has turned things around. And I look at the people in Washington and Westminster, and they've obviously no attention. You know, it's their, their de- our democratic system is run by corporations who are funding our our, um, our election campaigns, you know, for, for both the Labour and Tories. You know, so where do you go from there? You know, um, we need to start being honest about this. What do you think is the answer to that, to what we do about our politics? Do you think the answer is is new political parties? Is it is it kind of mass grassroots movements who will force change and force politicians to change? What's the what's the route to it? Yeah, um, again, I think I think I think new parties coming along, like the Green Party or you know, Syriza in, in Greece, um, are are good examples. But I think. I think the system is pretty tied up. You know, you've got you've got the large donors contributing to the big parties. You know, who get all the all the coverage. And so I don't see in the UK, for example, the Green Party coming in to power anytime soon. Um, and that's we've got to, again be honest about this because we're you know we're on the brink of ecological disaster. Um, personally, I probably think at this stage of the game, some form of revolution will probably be required in terms of. Um, creating something that's actually healthy for human beings and for the planet. But again, how you go about that is another question. Yeah. Um, I don't think small reforms to our to what is an incredibly brutal system um, is going to change things. You know. So do you, but you um, see yourself as kind of choosing to opt out of the system rather than um, necessarily wanting to be the one at the at the vanguard leading a revolution against it. Yeah, well, increasingly, I mean, like I, I say now that actually I want to live with dignity, whatever that means. And so, like part of my, my way of life is not about changing the world; it's just about actually living in a way that feels aligned with my own values. Um, I'm not contributing to the mess, but I also am increasingly becoming more political and. Um, and I would be happy to take part in any, any kind of resistance movements to the forces of doom. Um, so uh, so it, I think it's got to be both. I think there's a good, strong need to be the change you want to see in the world and to kind of put in practice your own, you know, your own, the things you believe in yourself, but also to not forget that actually there's a lot of stuff happening in the world that needs um, dedicated people um, campaigning for and, and fighting against them. And we need to do both, you know. And I, I think my biggest message to people is just to kind of do whatever uh, makes you come alive. Do whatever you know um, is kind of flowing through you at any moment. So if you're passionate about, you know, um, women's rights or um, the rights of peasants or you know ecological issues or social issues, then go and do that. That's the only thing that's sustainable for any of us. You know, do what we're passionate about. Um, I think the rest will just work itself out in whatever way it needs to.